Greetings Exiles, I'm Cod Raziel and joining me today as always are Sir Reginald Amadeus Fortescue the Third and Frank. Say hi guys. Hi. And today we're going to be going over my Ascendant Righteous Fire which uh, uses some pretty entertaining mechanics to give Righteous Fire a completely different playstyle from the others. So this version of the Righteous Fire builds uses Molten Strike along with two Stormfire Opal Rings to really boost the damage. And in order to accomplish this, let's go have a look at our passive tree first and see which ascendancies I've chosen. First and most importantly, I've chosen the Elementalist and that is for the shocks from your hits always increase damage taken by at least 10%. Now what this does is it means we always shock if we deal lightning damage. And that's pretty much it. Most of the other stuff just doesn't really apply to us. It's just that one thing that really makes this interesting. And then I've also picked up the Chieftain, which gives us some regeneration as well as a chance to cover enemies in Ash. If you wanted to go for a more defensive, cheaper version, you could also pick up the Juggernaut here, which would give us all the accuracy rating we need, as well as giving us immunity to chill and stun, and a few endurance charges. We then pick up Path of the Marauder because it was the most efficient way to save points. So now with that said, let's go over the gear we use to accomplish this. Now, like I said, we use Molten Strike, which means we're kind of limited on the weapons we can use. We can only use weapons that have the no physical damage affix. So pretty much that limits us to Cospreys and Fidelitis Spike. Now Fidelizer Spike actually has everything we need on it, including chance to shock and a really high attack speed. So we equip Fidelizer Spike to do our Molten Strike without doing any fire damage. It's important to note that you shouldn't have any flat physical damage anywhere on your gear or on Abyss Jewels or anything like that. And let's have a look at the rest of our gear. We use Calm's Heart because we're not really in need of the sockets and we are in need of the life. We use a run of the mill marble amulet with life and resists and I've crafted aspect of the spider onto this one which is pretty good since I had the mana for it. We then use two stormfire opal rings which grants us 6% increased burning damage for each enemy you've shocked recently. This damage scales ridiculously with molten strike as you can imagine. I'm unsure on the exact values, but I'm probably getting at least 300% per ring in regular single target scenarios. Then for our offhand, we have two options, and that is another Fiddle Lighter Spike, which will give us additional chance shock, as well as additional attack speed and damage. Alternatively, we can use a Elder Tower Shield with a whole bunch of life and a uh, Fagan crafted reduced damage taken over time. As you can see I've got both and I just swap between them depending on the situation that I have. For the belt we use a standard life and increased life recovery rate Elder Belt. These are getting more and more expensive as things go on so you may need to replace this with a heavy belt if you're on a budget. For my boots, I've chosen boots that have socketed gems are supported by spell totem and the reason for this is so that I can put in a scorching ray totem. This just gives us a bit of extra damage since we're already boosting our burning damage, this seemed like a logical choice. And now the way we're accomplishing the Molten Strike and Righteous Fire combo. First of all we're using a Righteous Fire Helm. I picked this one because the concentrated effect was meaning that I couldn't use Ancestral Call and stay within the radius of my Righteous Fire, so this is my sort of map clearing Righteous Fire. And I also have another Helm, which is for boss fighting and whatnot when I can't use Ancestral Call. And then the Molten Strike is socketed into gloves which have faster attacks and additional accuracy. Now you wouldn't need the additional accuracy and could probably keep trying for faster attacks and using Essence of Insanity to make it even faster if you were doing the Juggernaut. 
these are just standard life faster attacks additional accuracy gloves and in there we've got our molten strike for my flasks I'm using a blood of the Karui this is for healing myself between combat and also just spike damage healing that's a little bit helpful I'm then using a witchfire brew because as you can imagine things are pretty tight sockets wise at this point next I'm using a sulfur flask of warding just to remove those curses when I'm curse based maps or doing the labyrinth on a day with fonts and then using a granite flask of iron skin this is just to boost her armor since this build lacks physical mitigation for the most part and lastly my standard ruby flask of staunching just to remove those bleeds when I'm taking a lot of degen damage so let's go over how we have our skill gems set up first of all in our helm we have righteous fire linked to arcane surge increased area of effect and swift affliction now this arcane surge is primarily to turn righteous fire into a duration skill so that both swift affliction and less duration work on it this is an interesting little technique if you have a less duration burning damage helm then you can do this for maximum damage increased area of effect can be substituted for elemental focus or I don't really recommend but concentrated effect and now the molten strike setup is molten strike linked with multi strike ancestral call and life gain on hit you can replace ancestral call with innovate to get a hundred percent shock chance while dual wielding or eighty percent shock chance while using a shield next our scorching ray setup in our boots is scorching ray linked with elemental focus efficacy and burning damage our aura setup is a 2-1 linked shield or weapon with purity of fire linked to empower to get to level 23 for 5% maximum resistance and a vitality which is not linked to empower because that would be a waste of mana really and in our main hand we have leap slam with fortify and faster attacks if you're using a shield then we go for shield charge fortify and faster attacks as you can see my shield is set up so that the purity of fire and the vitality are in the same links in the same places on the opposite side this is so that when I weapon swap my auras don't reserve or don't unreserve so it's really convenient for quick switching on the fly you may want to choose to put two purity of fires into these two sockets so that you can just level your purities in the setup you use least and then just vol them when the time comes you could actually put two purity of fires in both sides just until you have a level 21 just a quick overview of the passive tree as well as very importantly the jewels that we need for this build so it's mostly just standard righteous fire fare with the exception of not taking much increased burning damage and increased fire damage because it be ends up being pretty worthless once we get all those stacks up so for the jewels and this is for just about every jewel socket first off we have wildfires we have two of those because more projectiles equals more shocks equals more damage and then we also have a watcher's eye which has life gained on hit while affected by vitality you could also get one of the recovery rate ones but I found that this worked better for me at least and then all of your other jewels will look like this we have life one with mana gained on hit to sustain our molten strike and five percent chance to shock life chance to shock attacking car speed life chance to shock stats you may need life chance to shock and increased attack speed you can get a lot of attack speed this way so be sure to add that into your dual searches and lastly another attack speed life chance to shock this build could be upgraded far beyond what I've set up here by having a proper essence crafted helm essence crafted gloves 
a shield with maximum fire resistance wouldn't hurt. You could corrupt your fiddleiter spike with culling strike. You could get an elder marble amulet. There are so many upgrades to do with this build that I may continue it. Although I have plans of uh, doing the flashback event and I have a build plan for that which is going to fix the problem I have with the chieftain and that is that when making the chieftain build I just did not enjoy playing it. So the chieftain build will be a solo self found righteous fire. So stay tuned for that. And that is about it for this build. I strongly recommend it for people that believe that Righteous Fire is a boring playstyle. Because this is an action packed playstyle and it's, it's really exciting to play and it can do most content if you're well versed with the content. So that said, from myself, Sir Reginald Amadeus, Fortescue the Third, and Frank, we'd like to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. And if you like this style of content, then do subscribe to my channel. And with that all said, good luck and stay juicy.